Hey folks, your OS Reviews. You're watching our video first look at the Dell Studio XPS 8300. So the Studio XPS is a fairly mid-tier line of desktops that Dell has been producing for quite a few years now, and it's still a solid option if you are looking for a desktop to enhance productivity in the office or at home. Obviously, as we head into 2017, it seems like desktops are becoming kind of a dying breed unless you need very heavy lifting or if you're a gamer. Um, honestly, because a ultra portable as well as a higher end laptop Laptops these days can really do all the things that we want, whether it's media streaming or uh, editing documents, in addition to some heavier tasks such as uh, Photoshop as well. Uh, with that being said, this is still a solid option if you're looking for a relatively low cost uh, desktop to uh, do some more heavy productivity in addition to multitasking, so you can definitely check this one out. It's been on the market for a few years now, but the specs are still decent, like I said, and that includes a Intel Core i5 or a Core i7 option, and also has a uh, Intel a Radeon HD. 5670 GPU, which is uh, decent as well for handling some multimedia, and it obviously is capable of uh, running Windows 10 without a free update that has rolled out. Otherwise, it's a Core i5 chipset, which is clocked at 3.3 gigahertz, and RAM, you have about 8 gigabytes of built-in uh, RAM, DDR3 RAM, which is also further expandable. So one of the other benefits of having a desktop in general is the customization. It's easy to kind of pop off the plates and allow you to upgrade either the RAM or the hard drive, so on and so forth, and it really allows um, people who like modding as well as uh, changing configurations and more, more flexibility than a traditional laptop. So on the sides here, there's access to the Studio XPS logo in addition to the Intel and Microsoft logos down below. It has this glossy piano black surface on the front, which attracts a fair amount of dust and fingerprints. And there's also access to additional trays, which hides some USB ports. There is an optical drive port on the sides, which can be expanded to a, or updated to a Blu-ray uh, slot, but uh, right now it's just using DVD out of the box, so it's, you can burn discs as well as uh, play movies as well. The top here features access to a memory card reader, so it supports full-size uh, SD cards and media. On the very top, you have access to the dedicated power on-off switch, and the surface here also has a tilted uh, additional two USB 2.0 ports in addition to a 3.5mm headphone port to plug into speakers as well as a microphone port, so it's pretty easy to access these. You don't have the most amount of uh, USB ports in the world, although you do get uh, quite a few more on the very back of the unit, although those are a bit more difficult to access unless you have a more convenient setup. Uh, the sides also features the Studio XPS branding in, in addition to ventilation grills to prevent the computer from overheating. So all in all, a pretty uh, classy as well as an elegant design for a desktop. We're going to turn this thing over and show you guys some of the ports. You see that the there's back. access to a traditional kind of VGA ports for plugging in an external monitor, or of course you can also use HDMI, that's an additional function on here. There's access to a few other ports in terms of composite for video as well as the sound. There's an Ethernet port if you don't want to use a Wi-Fi. Um, unfortunately, there is no Wi-Fi built on here, so you do have to add your own adapter if you want to use wireless internet. And there's also access to additional through USB 2.0 ports for, again, connecting peripherals like computer keyboards as well as mouse. Um, so that's basically the design. There's also the power cord on the very top there, so um, a pretty standard. Uh, set up on. All right, so that's been our video first look at the Dell Studio XPS, a fairly reliable and low cost desktop that you can pick up. Uh, this originally came out with a Windows 7 Home Premium installed, but obviously again can be upgraded to Windows 10 and it now sells on Amazon and eBay for about 300 bucks and under, so pretty good for the components that are underneath the hood. Obviously, I think this is best suited for productivity, so if you're someone who does a lot of multitasking, a lot of uh, editing documents, as well as maybe Photoshop, this could be a good option and I would recommend keeping the Windows operating system just because Linux, even though it would make the machine faster, um, is really better suited for even lighter uh, components. Perhaps if you have an older laptop or a lo older desktop, um, you want to make it speed up, that would be a good alternative. Uh, but at this cost, this is really just meant, I think, as a good mid-tier productivity machine for home or office usage. You can check out more information about this in our official written review, but for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Review.